Hi, this is the third video in a series on building an Android app with Eclipse, the Android development tools, and then this App Inventor Java branch. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the code, the sample code we did, okay? And I'm just going to, you know, come up here and start from the top. Essentially, you always are going to import um, some of these um, classes that use, it's part of the framework, right? You're using the Java Bridge library and it's a framework that allows you to kind of fill in the specifics of your Android app but you need to import a bunch of stuff here and it will always be the same okay and then you're gonna import all the components you want to put in your app so my app is real simple it's got one button and so I have one import statement you're always gonna you know choose the path to the library so this is the same this is the path of the library that we imported before. So I've got this Android runtime library and in fact this is the path to it. So whatever components you want, say import all this stuff dot button or dot texting, dot text box, any of the components you're used to in App Inventor. Okay? So anyway, that's the import. You're always going to use this same class header. Public class screen one extends form. Think of form as a class that knows how to be an Android app, you know, knows how to be a screen in an Android app. And what we're doing is building a specific one called screen one. Okay, so you just can copy this header exactly. Now, within the class, you're going to define some what are called data members. So in Java, a class has variables, they're kind of like global variables, they're global to the class. So if you define a data member, you can then use that data member, that variable, in all the methods of your class. And in fact, that's what we're doing. We've got this screen one, and he's going to have a variable called red button of type button. Okay. So you'll have a number of declarations here for all the components you're going to use in your app. And make sure to declare them above any of the methods and so that they're class data members. Okay. So I just have one button in this one. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're always going to have a function called um, dollar sign define, okay? And this is like the screen initializing app inventor. This is where you're going to create your components and do any of the initialization stuff you want to do. In this case, I'm creating my button, my red button, okay? So up here I declare it, but I say it's a, what type it is. But down here I actually have to, you know, instantiate it, create it, okay? This parameter to the constructor of button, this refers to the enclosing class, which is the screen. And what we're saying is we want this button to be a child of or be enclosed by the screen. Okay. We could also have a horizontal arrangement or some, you know, App Inventor has a bunch of arrangements. Like if you want two components to be side by side, you create a horizontal arrangement. And if we did that, we would put that object, the horizontal arrangement, in as our parent here. You know, so the button would be kind of enclosed in it. But in this case, we just want our button to show up on the canvas, okay? And um, you, as you'll remember, there's there's the button. It's just, just a single button uh, that shows up on the canvas. Um, okay, next thing is we can set the properties of the button. And you do it with this set function. This one's called text. The way you set the properties of the components is the function name is the same as the property name in App Inventor. So if you remember the App Inventor designer, if you want to change the text of a button, you know, what shows up on the button, um, you change the text property. So here we just call the function called text. We give a parameter, which is the string red, and that's why um, red shows up as the text here. Okay. Um, there's also get functions. If we want to you know, find out the value that's on that button, we would call redbutton.txt within an empty parameter list. And that would return us the text of whatever's on the button. So the set is the property name with a parameter. The get is the property name without a parameter. Okay. And here's another example. We set the background color property, in this case, to some color. Okay. And this is just a hexadecimal color. We could also change it to kind of a built-in type like color. Um, red okay um, but either either one will work, work will work fine all right so anyway here is how you change the properties and, and in your dollar sign divine create
create all your components, create them in the order you want them to appear on the screen, set their properties how you want them, and then you'll at least have the UI set up for your, your app. Okay, so how do you do events? Well, you're always going to make the call to this same function. It's called event dispatcher dot register event for delegation. Okay, you don't have to know about the insights of this. All you need to know is whatever event you want to deal with, this click, you need to put it as this third parameter. And you'll put this, which is the screen, as the first parameter. Second parameter doesn't really matter. It's just kind of naming your register registration you're doing. Okay, so in this case, we care about the click event. Okay, and we don't have to say which button really we're dealing with. And the reason is because you're going to define this function called dispatch event. And it's actually got um, three parameters. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. One is called the component, one's the component name, and the event name. Okay, so this is going to get called for every event that you register, and then you just have to ask which event it is. And notice I'm asking if my component is the red button and if the event is clicked. So red button dot click. When red button dot click, here's the code for it. Okay, I could put the event handling code right here. Uh, in this case, I've chosen to call another function that I create, red button click, and I just wrote this function down below, and as you'll notice all it does is set the background color of the button to red. Alright, so this is kind of the basics of how your app's going to work. You'll create your components in the dollar sign define function, you'll register the event you care about, and then you'll define this function and kind of ask which component of the event you're dealing with and you'll have your event handler for it right there. Um, anyway, the simplest um, code you can think of for a App Inventor Java Bridge app. And in, in future videos, you know, I'll tell you about more complex um, app building.